My name is Lyle Troxell. I'm at the JS Everywhere conference with my co-host to GeekSpeak, Miles Mom. Elam. We've been hosting GeekSpeak for a few years now. It's a little radio show in Santa Cruz. And uh, we're here in San Jose to talk about JavaScript. And luckily, we have uh, Kyle Simpson. Kyle, thanks for joining us today. Nice to meet you, Lyle. Um, I love Kyle just hand me his card, and it's friggin' awesome. We'll have to put a picture up on the website. Um, it's a JavaScript object called card, and it's valid, though Miles got any problems with it? Oh, the constructor's lowercase. That's yeah, awesome. dude, what's up with that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't buy into all that fancy stuff. It's but just it, JavaScript. But, but it's just JavaScript, but tr it's true that it, when, you, when you do like capitalize your constructors, you later know what they are. Yeah. Well, so I, I will also betray that I don't often do a lot of object-oriented JavaScript development because I find most of the time it's not all that necessary. Well, yeah. what kind uh, of JavaScript so development do you do then? Just, just straight modular JavaScript development. So. Uh, Object-oriented JavaScript is, uh, has two different ways that you can think about it. You can think about it from the modularization, encapsulation. encapsulation. Very, very important, very useful. Uh, but when you start talking about prototypal inheritance, there's fewer and fewer things I think the prototypal inheritance actually map well to. There's a lot of cases where we try to map it onto things because it sounds good or it looks good in a textbook or, example. Or we used but, to do Java development. Right, so, and we, yeah. and we just poured over that code. Right. But, uh, but I don't do a lot of prototypal inheritance. So, so, what, do you, so what are you uh, coding lately? So I do a lot of work in um, JavaScript in the full stack. I do a lot of work in Node.js, of course. I like to call myself a middle-end JavaScript developer. So I like to work in the lower 10% of what happens in the browser, the upper 10% of what happens on the server, and uh, kind of marrying those two together. I call that middle-end architecture. Um, and the idea is that uh, your back end and your front end should never talk. There needs to be a buffer between the two. Mm -hmm. So for a number of years, I've been trying to push on these efforts. Node.js is a great realization of the fact that no matter what backend you have, no matter what black box it is, whether it's .NET or Java, uh, you can utilize the power of JavaScript in that middle end area uh, to bridge the gap between the browser environment, which is clearly and always going to be JavaScript, and your backend environment. So things like templating and URL routing and data validation and data formatting, all those things are things that are perfect for JavaScript. And the great part is, if you do use a JavaScript middle end, you can reuse that code in both places. Right. Well, speaking of validation, that's, this kind of dovetails in with the conversation you were having during your talk about older browsers have different feature sets than mm -hmm. the newer ones do, Very and true. how to um, how to negotiate that that minefield and mm -hmm. what's 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 right and what's not. The newer specs have validation APIs ah, right. uh, within JavaScript for checking out forms, but i.e. 6 or 7 or, or some, uh, actually most of the browsers don't. Right. Um, so where do we go from there? How do we navigate that minefield? That's a great question. So there are certain types of things that I think the uh, HTML language has given us in terms of validation um, that are really useful and valid. Um, I've been using them for years and I know a lot of people have. For instance, the max length attribute that we've had on input boxes. We've had that for like a decade. Very useful, very powerful to just give a, a very simple, subtle hint. I only expect you to enter three characters here. Don't write me yeah. a novel, right? Or, so, or if you have a URL, making sure no one puts in more sure. than that, that 2,000 lines. Right, or, exactly. Or 2, characters. So, so those things are useful. Uh, but this newest age of HTML-based validation of your forms, I'm not quite so comfortable with. And I'll go out on a limb. As, as big an HTML proponent as I am, um, I'm a bigger proponent of separation of concerns. And when we start baking our regular expressions directly into our markup, I think we've violated separation of concerns. So I think there's a better way to do uh, validation of your form input, and it uses JavaScript, and it uses it in both places. One of the reasons why people don't like data validation is they don't like writing that logic twice. Mm -hmm. They don't like maintaining it twice. The, one of the maximums of commu computer science is anytime there's more than one copy of something, one copy is always wrong. So one copy of your data validation rules is always behind the other. Uh, but if you use exactly the same code logic, both on your server and in the browser, you eliminate a problem entirely. Not and just I the think same logic, but the actual same code. Literally the exact same code. Um, OK, so, so you're per suggesting that you got your uh, JavaScript file that does all your validation. You, run, you make sure to build up your tool set so that you run it in a client, and you also run the same data before you uh, make it persistent. The, the paradigm is still the same, that you can't trust data from the browser. You do right. still have to do server-side validation. The question is whether or not that validation needs to happen deep in the guts of your backend code language, or whether it can happen further up the stack in what I call the middle end. Right. And because that that's extra exactly request, yeah. exactly. And so one of the problems that um, traditional backend developers have with this is like, oh no, 
you're taking away my validation rules. I don't know that I can trust that data before I stick it into the database. Yes, you can because it's still on the server and it's still part of your development stack. It's just that we're reusing that code in a more. But what about the database, database yeah. being? What about the database being the thing that says this has to be well formed? So, so the database can do certain types of things really well. And by the way, it's important to note that uh, when I talk about data validation, I mean stateless data, data validation. Things like, is it a well-formed email address? Right, right, right. Is it within a certain length that it needs to be? Um, stateful data validation, like is it a unique email address? Is it a unique birth date or whatever? That stuff does need to happen in the back end. But you often don't do that kind of stuff on the front end ever anyway. So sharing that type of code is not so important. Right. And you can never get rid of the back-end validation. Even if you're doing front-end validation, you, you have to do it on you the back-end. You can get rid of the back-end validation if you do middle-end validation. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, yeah, you still have to have, uh, OK. Yeah. Granted, I get, I get the, the concept that middle stack. I, mm -hmm. I like it. And, and of course, that is what we are seeing in Node uh, traditionally being done regularly. There's but a whole bunch of different middleware yeah. that's out What's there. What's your favorite great. templating language right now? Uh, the favorite templating language that I have is the one that I just wrote. <laughs> is it, that's why we have so many. <laughs> so I, that that's seems why like we that have was so many, right? that seems like that was a setup question. So yeah. I so I've uh, for a couple of years now I've been working on this concept for templating that I want to be remarkable for, not for what it can do but for what it cannot do. It's a more restrained templating that enforces separation of concern. It gives you only the logic that you need, and that's called grips. So if you want to check that out, it's up on GitHub. We will definitely do that. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoyed it.